Okay, welcome back to our uh, second uh, lecture, second class for today. All right, so we were um, in the last hour. We were looking at the first uh, point of how do we um, uh, stay emotionally whole, and we were we looked at uh, how we need to renounce lies with the truth of the word. And we said one is we become aware of what are the what are the lies or the untruths that. Uh, that look around in our minds and to be able to fight it with the word of God. Friends is the word of God because this word is truth and it's only his truth that can negate this lie. So it's important for us to understand, um, uh, uh, to, to keep knowing and meditating on God's, God's truth. Now, another important source of truth comes from the Holy Spirit or the presence of the Holy Spirit with us as a believer. Uh, if we, the more that we stay in tune with the Holy Spirit, He's the one who guides us and leads us into all truth. Uh, we see that in John 16, 13, it says, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will tell you things to come so he is the one who leads us into truth who guides us into all truth so asking for the presence of the holy spirit to guide us into truth to bring that truth to us to reveal truth to us even as we spend time in god's word helps us to stand and to be maintained in that emotional wholeness. We also see in 1 John 2, 20 and 27, that the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, there is an anointing that comes with the Holy Spirit. And this anointing is what we have received <clears throat> from, from God because he abides in us, the Holy Spirit abides in us. And it says, you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true and is not a lie, and just as he has taught you, you will abide in him. So the more that we abide, we seek, we reside, we meditate on God's word, the more of the anointing of the Holy Spirit falls on us, the more guidance we do have with, the, with understanding how we can keep away from, from the lies, lies. So even as we walk in God's word, we also need to yield to the power of the Holy Spirit. And there we will, and, and as we do that, <clears throat> the more that we know God's word <clears throat> and walk in it, we will, uh, it will, uh, you know, you will begin to, it will become a normal thing for you to become aware and immediately reject those suggestions or those lies or those deceptions that come either from our own flesh, from those others or from, or from evil spirits, it, you, will, you will immediately be able to uh, know it. It will be normal. It, it's not something that you, may, you need a lot of effort to do. But as, as it becomes, as you journey in this, as, you become, as you're more consistent in it, the more that you're consistent in it, in it the more victory you will have. It's like, you know, when, you, when you're learning to play an instrument, the more that you practice, the more that you're consistent in practicing, the better you become. So similarly, the more that you walk in God's word, learn God's word, abide in God's word, uh, live in God's word, have everything filtered under God's word as you are yielding to the Holy Spirit, it becomes normal to reject these lies or these deceptions. And what happens is there is no space for the evil one to 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 knock at your door there isn't a space that those areas will just not be a place where where the spirit uh, where the uh, evil spirits can enter so the more that we are yielded the more that we walk in god's truth the more that we become empowered to uh, to reject that which is not uh, not of God. And it protects, of course, our emotional self. It, it protects our mind. It protects our soul. Because we have not permitted any entrance uh, into our minds through through methods of thoughts or through methods of others' lies in, in our lives. So let's continue to be 
vigilant, to be guarded, to be aware about what is entering us and what doors we are opening to bring about the uh, the entrance of these lies or these deceptions. So being aware, being guarded, being you know we, we spoke about uh, um, uh, you know uh, putting up the loins of our of our hearts, right? So keeping in and ensuring that we stay vigilant, we stay vigilant that we do not permit any other attempts of the enemy or our own uh, deceptions, our own lies to to. Uh, take captive of our thoughts. The second thing that we we are going to be looking at as we stay in that emotional wholeness is to speak blessing and to cancel curses. So we we discussed this in the initial parts of our uh, uh, of our chapter, where the source of our emotional brokenness often is the words that we use over our lives, and how much of power our words have that our words become very influential in our lives and uh, and it has a great impact on us. And we see that in Proverbs 18, 21, that death and life are in the power of the tongue. So what you say is, what, is what's fruit you will eat. And uh, often we all understand and we know that there are many times that we are very careless with the kind of things that we say uh, to ourselves, the things that we say to others around us, and uh, and it comes out very, very, sometimes very unconsciously, sometimes because it's become like a habitual pattern in our lives, just to just to think something that isn't uh, uh, that isn't a blessing. Excuse me. <clears throat> to think something that isn't a blessing, and to say say and. Um, declare things that uh, that do not bring us into a place of emotional wholeness now th this can be what we tell ourselves <clears throat> so <clears throat> um think about maybe uh, you know you you're doing uh, a, a, a chore or you're doing something and immediately the the words that that may come is you know i'm not i'm no good at this i can't do this or um you know whatever i'm going to make it's going to become a disaster or uh, uh, how much ever i clean this place up you know it's going to get get dirty again so being careful about what we are speaking so we need to come to a point of being able to speak blessing that is speaking things that align to what God has says. And this is so very important in us to stay whole. Um, so especially when we're talking about the future, you know, we may declare certain things, we may say certain things that we have not been paid close attention to, but words become carriers and they carry blessing or they carry curse. So being very vigilant about the kind of words that we use, <clears throat> not just to ourselves, but also to those around around us. So pronouncing things over um, our family or our children, over our marriage, over the work we have, over um, our finances, over our health, uh, you know, like even saying things like, uh, you know, my my father or my mother had this disease, and I'm sure that I'm going to have it too, right? Or there's a, there's been a family history of such and such disorder, and this is what is going to happen to me too. Or this is what I've seen. Uh, you know, this is how my grandfather was, my my father was, and this is how I am, and this is how my children will be. So being vigilant about what you're saying, because. Um, we see that in scripture also, and and, a, and an example that we can look back is the way uh, uh, how the how God instructed the priests um, uh, who were over the Israelites to pronounce blessing over them. Okay, and uh, we'll we'll just look up that verse. It's in Numbers chapter six, verses twenty-two to twenty-seven, and I will read that to you. Uh, it says, and the Lord said, spoke to Moses saying, speak.
speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. <clears throat> Say to them, <clears throat> The Lord bless you and keep you. <clears throat> the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. So you see here how the Lord tells the priests, Aaron and his sons, this is the way that you need to speak or this is the way that you bless the children of Israel. Say to them that the Lord is the one who blesses you and keeps you. The Lord is the one who makes his face shine upon you and gracious. He's the one who lifts your countenance, gives you his peace, and he's the one he will bless. Right. So speaking uh, anything to ourselves or to those around, what, what we are to do is to speak that life, to speak blessing, and to just be able to pronounce the promises of God over our lives. So even when they are casual statements, being uh, stating and speaking that you will be in health, that you will prosper, that you will be emotionally whole, that you will stand on the grace of God, that you will that you cancel all the work of the enemy in your life that you will be filled with health and wholeness because of the blood of the Lamb, that you will be delivered from anything that is evil because he, because the blood of the Lamb is upon you. So just even in those casual things to be able to declare it. So I've, uh, so uh, I think, you know, this becomes, it, it's something that becomes like, needs to become like a practice because wherever you turn, you know, even in your homes, if you have children, you will find that they will declare things over themselves. And that's a good teaching moment to help your children to see, to help them see that your words have power. And what you declare is what is going to bear fruit in your life. So teaching them to being vigilant about the words that they use and, uh, you know, catching them on that. Also, not just speaking a blessing, but to cancel curses. So we are, in order to be emotionally whole, we cancel curses. So when we, when, what do we understand by a curse? A curse is something that is not a blessing. Okay. So if there is, if there is good, there is evil. If there is blessing, there is curse. So if, the, if your words can bring about blessing, then your words can also bring about curses. And that's exactly what we need to do is to recognize that there are curses. So there may be certain things that we have been talking to ourselves or, you know, bringing about these curses right from our past. So some things we've been, we've been saying um, uh, from the time we've been, we've been probably children or from, from earlier points uh, of, our, of our past that we continue to say the same things and we bring about new ones, things that we just begin to speak over ourselves. And these are things that we need to recognize. Just like we recognize lies, we also recognize what we are saying. What are the kind of curses we are saying? I wish we had a little bit more time. I would have broken you all into groups again to help you uh, Think about what is it that you tell yourself, okay? And if you can, uh, maybe in, in just a couple of minutes, just take down and write down what are some of the things that you that you have said about yourself. So, so you have you probably cursed yourself in the past, or you curse yourself right now as you speak into the present. We had spoke about self-inflicting curses, you know, earlier on in our class. The things that we speak over ourselves, things that we say. That uh, uh, that that are like curses. Like you know, often it is, you know, um, I am I, I'm I'm just a lazy person, or I'm always I always just think negative, or I'm uh, I am definitely going to stay fat, okay? Or uh, I, I'm I'm an angry person, right? And or I'm uh, I'm someone who's a warrior. So just declaring these negative things. Uh, over ourselves is something that, uh, you know, what is called as inner vows, that we are making 
those vows to ourselves that other than this, we cannot operate uh, any other how, right? So that becomes very, very, uh, very real uh, again, okay? And so we need to make sure that we cancel these also. Whatever we've said in the past, whatever we, whatever we are saying right now. Now, how do we do that? Now, to, be, to cancel a curse, all that you need to do is speak words that declare that you cancel and negate and nullify those words. So maybe sometimes you will say that and then you immediately say, Lord, in Jesus' name, I just negate and nullify and make uh, completely trash all that. And there is no power in those words. I completely negate it. Okay. And in turn, you declare that which is true, that which is of the word of God and that which he says about you. So... I'm going to give you two minutes to think about something that you keep telling yourself, okay? And you're going to actively negate it and you're going to declare that which is positive or the word of God, okay? So it can be anything. It can even be with regard to your weight, with regard to your hair fall. Uh, uh, I mean, these, these are real things that happen with regard to your health, with regard to your money, with regard to wisdom with regard to an ability uh with regard to uh you know e even experiencing a truth that god has bought for you maybe some identity you know you just say okay uh, i am inadequate or i am i am a loser or whatever so whatever cancel those curses cancel it and uh negate it and come to a place to speaking the truth speaking positive okay so i'm going to give you all two minutes to do that and maybe we'll have around maybe around three four minutes of sharing about anyone who is who's actively just does that you don't have to really tell us what it is but someone uh, this is spoken to and and you've done it okay so two minutes so two three minutes um i'd like you to take this time to write it and and get that done Okay, anybody would like to share anything that uh, that you have committed to do to cancel what you've been saying to yourself over the very many years, maybe something new that you have canceled and you have taken on the word of God. Anybody, one or two of you would like to <clears throat> just just share? Anyone?
okay, we'll we'll move on. I respect pri privacy, so um, I trust that you have taken this time to do that. However, okay, so even as we, I think there's someone who lifted their hands. Yes, Susan, go ahead. Yes, uh, sometimes you know uh, when my husband tells me. Uh, to preach somewhere or uh, to translate uh, from uh, Marathi to English, that time every time I say, no, it won't be able for me. I won't, <laughs> I cannot do it. <laughs> Such mm -hmm. negative words <laughs> I say sometimes. Okay. And there okay. are many more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, did you actively take time to just negate it and cancel it? And uh, speak God's word over you. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. So okay, you good. can, so you can, you can do you can all do things, all things through, Christ through Christ who sent Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Okay. Thank you for sharing. All right. So we'll we'll move ahead. Um, now, we, like we were saying that um, you know the uh, to identify this, there is there is probably a couple of ways that you need to identify how sometimes curses come over you, right? Uh, it can be something that has inadvertently happened. That That is when, you know, parents uh, say wrong things about you, even as you grow up, say wrong words rather, of you that generally they are essentially curses. You know, you won't amount up to anything or you're such a lazy oaf or, you know, who is going to marry you or, uh, you know, you're going to be a beggar on the street. There are so many things that we may inadvertently say. And generally, these are uh, things where there are, um, um, you know, those people who have authority over you, right? That's that's what gets, gets said. Or there can be even at times that it comes through spiritual leaders. They may be pastors or elders uh, who in their need to manipulate or control um, could pronounce things like curses over over people, right? So, the, so just to be able to identify what these sources are, so it can come from you, it can come from from people around you that you love, uh, people, uh, you know, general general outside the outside world, the enemy. There are so many of it. I think one of the biggest examples that we can look at is. Um, uh, uh, Jabez, and there isn't very much written about Jabez in, in scripture, and there are just two verses that are uh, handed to him, but then those two verses are extremely powerful, and you find that in First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 to 10, and I'm just going to read that. Uh, it says, now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. So the meaning of Jabez was, he brings pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Okay, so this is quite interesting to see how Jabez's mother um, you know, was just so annoyed that called him Jabez because I bore him in pain, the guy who brings pain. And he, and he becomes actually the most honorable one in his family. And you see that, uh, you know, Jabez says that you would, that I will not cause pain. And he, he, he speaks that. So, uh, you know, when when you're named something, you 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 would rather have the um, the thought of you know let me let me live this way because this is the label that's been put on me. My mother has given me that name. That's what she called me. That's what she thought of me. Oh poor me, um, you know. Uh, so he was called this, someone who causes pain, but he becomes. He, he changes that. And one of the translations says he was the most respected sons in the family. Okay. And he because he believed God can turn around what was meant for a curse um, into a blessing. So similarly, those of us who are children and people of God, we know that 
the Lord has a blessing of God upon our lives and it is and it surpasses everything else. It surpasses every other curse that others would have spoken over us. So we identify that no matter what label someone has given us, it can be, like I said, family, it can be ourselves, it can be doctors, it can be people, uh, anything, no matter what the label has been given to us. And you may also have seen that label being played out in your life for over years. But then when you come to a place where you begin to renounce that, renounce those lies, renounce that and, and negate those, uh, cancel those curses upon your life and call upon a blessing as to how God has uh, uh, built you up, you, you'll see that things change. Another example that we see is Balaam. And uh, Balaam was, was uh, called by Balak to curse the nation of Israel. Okay, And uh, Balaam recognized that he was not in a position to curse something where the blessing or the hand of God was. And you see that in Numbers 23, verse 23. So it says, for there is no sorcery against Jacob, that means Israel, nor well, oh, what God has done. So the, the fact that he couldn't, although that's what he was called to do, he couldn't do it because the blessing of the Lord was upon the nation of Israel. And we see that instead of actually bringing about a curse, he brought about a blessing. And uh, the king was very upset with him that he did bring about a blessing instead of actually making a curse because he couldn't get himself to do that. Because where the blessing of the Lord is, no curse is, is applicable or no curse can take effect. Okay, the, One of the things that the Bible also states is that a curse will not come without a cause. And we see that in Proverbs 26, uh, verse 2. It says, like a, uh, like a flitting sparrow, like a flying swallow, so a curse without cause shall not arise. So anything... The, the things that we say or, or we do, um, uh, the, the things we, the wrong things that we say and do can open the door and it can create a cause for a curse. So, so let's be careful that we do not have any of those open doors to allow the enemy to walk in and the, allow the enemy to uh, build upon that that curse. So that's what we need to do is to be able to cancel uh, every every negative word, cancel everything that that we have said about ourselves. Okay. So we've spoken about two things today, where we renounce the lies and we speak blessing and cancel curses. And I think we do definitely. Okay, we have twenty minutes. Okay, and I think uh, um, can we do the similar exercise that we did earlier? Can I break you all into groups and um, Again, like a quick sharing, just a two, three minute sharing about what um, what are probably things you believed and you 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 say that the active curses, like, like Susan was saying, you know, there are many more things that are active curses that you're telling yourself. Uh, so let's let's bring voice to it. And maybe, you know, each of you can pray for each other that you negate it, you cancel it and speak a blessing of the Lord over it. So shall we do that again? Is that good? Is that okay? Because we have time and uh, I think uh, it's powerful when we do that. Yes? Yes. No? Okay, great. Thank you, Avni. So nice to see, hear someone all out for it. Okay, so I'm just going to put a time. Uh, okay. Okay, so this there will be five rooms. If there's anyone stuck in this room, uh, Please don't, I kindly ask you all not to leave because, you know, if you all leave, then the others in the group sometimes could be left alone. Okay. Okay. I'm uh, breaking you all out. Those who are in the main group, uh, you need you may need to click saying join the breakout room. It's only then you will you will 
move. So please click the prompt that you have. Okay, I think we have, okay, we're five of us here. Y'all you you didn't get a prompt? None of you got a prompt to, to get into another room? Isaac, Salome, Elisha, Kennedy, and Simran? Okay, someone has left. Okay, please click on the prompt. Simran, Kennedy, Isaac. If you have a prompt, please click on the prompt. Are you all in the how, call? How to do that? Yes. Simran, did you get a prompt to say that to join the room, a breakout room? How to do? Uh, just look at your phone. If you're on a phone, I think it will show you join breakout room. That is not working. Not working. Okay, okay, never mind. Then uh, is Isaac and Kennedy on the call? Okay, Kennedy is left. Isaac, are you there? Oh, it doesn't seem like it. Okay, Simran, would you like to share? What, what do you think are some some things that you keep telling yourself that we can negate and we can uh, um, uh, pray for God's God's word over your life? Simran? Okay. Isaac, I suppose you're not here. I'm going to join another room. M V M V T V S J
Okay, welcome back, everybody. I hope again that was a fruitful time. I managed to get a glimpse from each room, and uh, it was so encouraging to hear, uh, you know, what we have recognized and what we want to cancel and the blessing that we want to live by. So make this uh, a journey. Uh, it's not something we just do in a classroom, but uh, we do in our in our lives, in our individual lives, maybe things that we believe as a family, um, uh, becoming aware of these lies, these, these things that we've said about ourselves, uh, breaking it, negating it, and speaking God's word, because God's word is truth, it's active, uh, it's living. Yes, we have to do it daily. Yes, Shri Kumar. Uh, it's, you know, keep, like I said, you know, the kind of thoughts that, the kind of stimuli that we have around us is so, is so much. Every minute there is information that is being thrown into your face through something, some uh, you, things you see, you hear, or people you talk to. So the more that you do this often, you know, just uh, looking at what you're believing, what you're, you're thinking, and uh, aligning yourself with God's word. So I think what we need to do daily is go back to scripture. That's what we need to do daily, right? More than making this ritualistic, so okay, maybe cancel curses or uh, renouncing lies. It's go back to, to scripture. And um, that's something that if you, if you know what is truth, you will not allow anything that is fake, right? You know the truth. You will not entertain that which is fake and that which is untrue. So... So yes, so that's that's that. Okay, uh, I think there was a question. Amen. Thank you, Elisha. Uh, he's made a comment saying he observed in his group that indeed there is victory in Christ to those who believe. Amen. Amen. Okay, shall we just uh, together just close with a word of prayer <clears throat> and just commit, um, you know, what we have all cancelled all negated and we've just just continue to speak that blessing so let's all just pray together heavenly father we thank you for this opportunity that you have given each one of us master holy spirit i thank you for the ways that you have revealed and guided us and corrected us lord there are some of us here who really uh, need a, a nudge and a, and, a, and a real prompting from you, Father, to, uh, to remember and understand and be aware of the kind of lies we believe in, the kind of things we say to ourselves that are not aligned to you, Father. Lord, we come right now and renounce and cancel everything we have spoken over our lives that is against the word of God. Lord, your word is living and it is active. Lord, it's a powerful sword. Lord, that that penetrates through every heart, penetrates through every um, ev every thought and ev every sinew, every ligament, Father, it penetrates through it. So whatever pronouncements we've made of ourselves, whether it be with regard to our children, whether it be regard to our families, with regard to our finances, our abilities, our capacities, our ministry, our wealth, um, our loved ones, our um, ourselves, our mind, our spirits, our bodies. Father, anything that is not of your word, Father, we come against it in Jesus' name and we receive what your word has said because it is truth, Lord, and we live by the truth. Your word says we are sanctified by the truth and we pray, God, that we will sharpen our minds so much day to day that we will live in your word, we will consume your word, we will we will be thirsty after your word that any time there is something that comes that is not of you, Lord, it will be rejected then and there, Father. It has no entry point of it, Father. Lord, we pray, we ask that you will empower us, God, to do this, Father. Make us um, make us soldiers that, that will keep away every trace of the enemy, every trace that is not of you, Father. Keep us that vigilant in your word. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that anoints us, that brings brings back the word in due time, in due season, at the right time to empower us and strengthen us. Father, we live victorious, Lord, by you. We live in triumph because of your word over our lives. Father, we are not 
permitting anything of the enemy to take control of our emotions or, or of the element of our, of our souls, Father. Our souls are protected in you. They are made whole. They are made perfected, Father, so that we live um, a happy, glorious, and joyful lives as you have promised. Thank you for this blessing over each one of us. Lord, I pray for each person here who shared, Father, who's made that commitment to stand, um, uh, uh, to live by the word of God. Father, empower us, God. Lord, may we, may we not turn our eyes to the left or to the right, but focused on you, setting our affection on you and your word, Father. Lord, I commit those who have not been able to join in, Father, I pray that the anointing flows over them as well, God, that you will continue to sanctify them. May we live lives that are victorious and may we manifest your glory, not just, in, not just in the places we live, but Lord, to whoever we meet, that we will empower and strengthen each one according to your word. Thank you for your goodness over our lives. We ask all these things in your precious and matchless name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. God bless. Amen. God bless. Amen. God bless. Thank, Thank you, you so much. We, we shall all meet next week. God bless. Thank you. Bless your week ahead. God bless you for the wonderful session, Pastor. Thank you so much. God bless. God bless, Anita. God bless.